Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Mike. I'm Jessica. And I'm Nate. It's Theology Thursday, and today we're dealing with some bad theology. That's right. Very bad. Today's plot is... Mary, did you know? Short answer? Yes! <laughs> all right, all right. For those of you who may not be familiar with this song, I'm, I'm not entirely certain that that's possible, as every station that plays Christmas music plays this song at least once a day. I think once an hour. That's entirely it's, likely. It's infuriating. But in case you're not familiar with it, Mary Did You Know is a song that was written about 20 years ago by an American... Uh, comedian. Christian, by, yeah, by an American comedian. <laughs> but it's not less. funny. It's not funny. Um, it's and sad. it basically... <laughs> The premise is, it's questions that might be pondered by Mary as she holds the baby Jesus in her arms shortly after his birth. And here I feel it necessary to say, this is the song is not all bad. It's it's got a good heart, and what has always been most encouraging to me is that it comes out of the Protestant musical tradition where it's very rare to hear any mention of the Blessed Virgin. Correct. And never as the Blessed Virgin. So, just the existence of Mary Did You Know encourages me, though it clearly has its problems. Yes. Many problems. For starters, again, as seen in the secret bridge that I put in our church program for Mary Did You Know, which we did not sing at church during a Mass. This isn't like whenever we visit a church at Christmas time, and for some reason that is the communion hymn, even though it has nothing to do with communion, it's theologically bad, and it just... No, it's no, not it was, liturgical music. No, no, it was like a Christmas sing-along. It was one of our, our, our auxiliary worship leaders. He was a brand new convert. He didn't understand how bad this song was. But we were singing it in a sing-along, so I put, with training someone, the bridge. Yes, 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 yes. The answer is yes. Because 99% of the questions that they ask in Mary Did You Know directly or indirectly relate to the fact that he was the Messiah. She knew he was the Messiah. They have thousands of years of history in Judaism where they're waiting for the Messiah. The prophets are talking about the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Some... that. Directly he asks, like the blind seeing and the lame walking and such. This was all in there. Th they were waiting for a Messiah. She knew she was going to have a Messiah. Of course he was going to do these things. There is there's one part that it, it gets to be, you know, somewhat of an issue due to, you know, the fact that God is outside of time. And we're talking about inside of time. So, yes, Jesus at the cross is how Mary was saved. However, in order for her to be the vessel for Christ, which I mean not in a disrespectful, like some Protestants, oh, she just gave birth to him way, but the fact that she was handmade before time. The Theotokos. Yes, which we'll probably get into later this month. You know, he, he made her pure and sinless, Due to the merits of the cross that was going to happen some, you know, 30-some years after Jesus was born. So, you can argue back and forth the line about how, you know, her child was going to save her. Will soon could deliver be, you. Yes. Could be correct, depending on exactly how you see it. When talking about <laughs> God and other beings that are outside of time... It gets complicated. Time gets a little wibbly-wobbly. But the rest of it is all things that either directly, this is what the Messiah is going to do when he comes, or it's the Messiah. Of course this is reasonable for it to happen. And, so and, and let's just hear the words of the Archangel Gabriel so that we can know for certain that Mary did in fact know. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> he for those Luke. of you who need a little scriptural backup, right here in the, chapter, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 30 through 33. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he shall be king over the house of Jacob 
forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, for, those, for those of you who need the slow version, what the angel <laughs> just said right here, he will be the son of God. So right there, son of God. This this was not at all. This would not have been at all confusing to a first for, to a first century Jewish person. Yes, because although they were expecting the Messiah, they did not necessarily know that Messiah was going to be God. However, but the fact <laughs> that he was called the Son of God would mean that he was in fact the Son of God. You you, you would not use those terms in any sort of lightheartedness. Uh, secondly. The Lord God will give him the throne of David. That right there is basically, he will be the Messiah. The one everybody's been waiting for since like almost forever. And, and how long will his reign be? It will be, it, there, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Yes. Both pointing out that, you know, he is God and therefore forever, and the fact that if you read through the Old Testament, one of the promises about the Messiah and, you know, the covenants that God made with the Jewish people was that there would be someone on the throne of David who would be there forever. The angel just said, you're he going to have the, the Son of God, of he will be the Messiah and fulfill all of the covenant. So, and, and once again, these were not terms that you took lightly. No. The, the part, half the reason why the, the Pharisees were always upset with Jesus was because when people went and made these kind of references to him, they either were very, very right. Or that was complete sacrilege. Or possibly. they had broken all, all of the, the worst rules. <laughs> so, Mary wasn't just plucked out of a crowd given a baby, and sent along her way. The angel told her who her child was, how he was to come to be. So if anyone asks you, did Mary know? The, the answer, answer is, is yes! yes! <laughs> and tomorrow is the great solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which in the United States, because she is our patron saint, is a holy day of obligation, or more properly viewed, a holy day of opportunity. Yes. So, get thyself to Mass. Yes, and also unrelated, but related, because my poor father has to go to Mass every birthday. Happy birthday, Dad! <laughs> Happy birthday, Jess's Dad! So, so remember, go down below, <laughs> hit the like button, because this episode was awesome. Hit subscribe, because <laughs> you want to see more of our shows. Make sure you ding the church bell, because that way you'll get notified when new ones come out. And until, go down below in the comments, and uh, if you have any songs that you think need to be exposed for the bad theology that they are, or perhaps you have a song that needs to be lifted up for the good theology that it is. It could happen. It could happen. We might have one coming up, we might have one coming up soon. Uh, go let us know about those in the comments below, and until next time, remember, live your faith. Love your faith. Share, share that, that love. love.